What is up, everybody? This is the Wild Nutrition Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Heskett, and this is episode 74. Today, we have another Unapologetic Friday, and as always, we're going to set that timer, get things going. I am on a limited time because, well, yesterday I was sleep deprived and totally forgot to record the podcast, so this is coming out on Friday, kind of like late morning, and I literally have a call in 20 minutes. So we're going to knock this guy out in under 20 minutes today. Today's topic is going to be do it for the kids. However, as usual, this is not going to be a kid-friendly episode. So if this is your first Unapologetic Friday, just so you know, this is raw, unfiltered. There's no editing that goes into it. There will be probably cursing. So if you're listening in the car, you might not, and you have your kids in there, you might not want to have this on. Go back to Monday's episode. Uh, with that being said, we're going to get into things. So 15 minutes on the clock. So today's topic is doing it for the kids. And what I mean by that is when we have a weight loss or a health goal, and if you are a mom or a dad, you need a goal outside of you. If you just have like, I want to lose 15 pounds, it's a pretty fucking awful goal. Like, It's just a terrible goal to have because it's not going to be what your long-term goal is. You're losing weight for a reason. It is not just to like, I want to get a six-pack. And maybe one or two of you, it is. But overall, like even when I was chasing like, I want a six-pack, it was more for confidence and self-esteem reasons or just to do it prove to myself I can do something when I compete in bodybuilding, not, uh, I want to do this just to do it. Like it fucking sucks to get there. So we want to have something that's bigger than ourselves as a goal. And if you're a mom or a dad, the simple thing is your kids. And if you are going to be a mom or dad soon, maybe in the near future, you also want to keep this mindset moving forward because it is fucking difficult. Now, I've heard forever from past clients, like, just wait till you have kids, just wait. And yes, it is fucking difficult. However, remember, if you are stuck with your weight, you have some health issues and you're trying, it is not your fault. It is difficult. And society tells you, hey, take a break. You have kids. You can always do in the future. You you don't have any energy. Just relax and watch Netflix. Society tells you to be lazy. It tells you not to chase your goals. It tells you not to try to better yourself. So it's not your fault. However, it is your responsibility to do something about it. So moving forward, those of you who have kids already know it's fucking draining. Um, But however, it is your responsibility to keep going even when you're tired. So I finally, like I'm getting back into my workout routine after four weeks since Victoria was born. I guess five weeks now. So week four, like I started getting back into the routine. I'm not in my full routine, but I'm getting more workouts in than not. I think I'm working out four for this week. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to be testing out something this weekend, something that my buddy uh, from Monday's podcast, which if you guys are big into hunting, um, elk hunting podcast coming out on Monday, even if you're not, some great stories. Um, if you are interested in like, hey, I never went to hunt, but I like hearing about it. Great stories coming out on Monday. So getting back to my point, your weight loss goal is going to be based off of you wanting to improve your health, you wanting longevity goals, you want to have better energy levels, you don't want to be in pain anymore, you want to feel confidence again. It is never just to lose weight. Yes, your doctor might say you need to lose weight, but it's, you need to lose weight because you will die of a heart attack. You have high blood pressure. You have insulin resistance and you're going to keep going and you're going to have type two diabetes. It's things like that. It's never just like, Hey, you need to lose weight because you need to lose weight. Guess what? Most people are not going to be successful if you're just looking at your weight loss for weight loss. Like, Hey, yeah, I know I need to work out. I know I need to lose some weight. Like no big deal. Like, okay, you need to lose weight or you're going to fucking die. You need to lose weight or you're going to die early. And someone posted like, um, I don't know how accurate this data is, but it's a great thought experiment. Like, why don't you see obese 80 year olds? Why? Because they don't make it to 80. They die before that. So when it comes to your health goals, remember that weight, you know, having 
some extra weight isn't ter- necessarily terrible, uh, but being severely overweight or even obese increases your risk for literally all cause mortality or all causes of death, cancer, heart attack, stroke, literally everything. And it just beats up your joints, which as we go into old age, the other thing we want to talk about is not just like longevity, but quality of life as well. And having too much weight on your body is going to just destroy your joints because it's always there beating them up, beating up your ankles, your knees, your hips, your low back. And so your quality of life can deteriorate over time. So even if you make it to 80, are you having the, you know, are you the 80 year old, the the old Italian person who's walking around all over town in Italy, or are you the person who's in a nursing facility and can't get out of bed? So that is a question you want to ask yourself of what you want, and that's what today's topic. And I'm assuming it's not to be the person that's bedridden if you're listening to this podcast. So it's very hard to sometimes visualize something that is, you know, I'm 33, we're talking about 80, like that's 47 years away. Like I haven't even lived 40 years. Those of you who are in your 40s, you're like, literally like my life, like, we're talking like my life up to this point, talking like another 40 years. Like I can't imagine that. And if you're in your 50s, then it's like, well, that's like another 30. Like it's very difficult to visualize that far out or stay motivated for something that literally that far. We're talking decades away. So that's where kids come into play. Like have you're with your kids all the time and you can get lost with trying to improve your health and everything. But what you have to remember is when you're tired, when you don't want to do things, Remember that you are setting the example for your kids in the future. So sometimes it's not just about yourself. Sometimes maybe you have some confidence issues. You have issues with uh, staying motivated, but you need to set that example for your kids. You need to set the example that, hey, like mom and dad need to take care of their health and they're going to ask you why. It's like, so we can be around for you. Or maybe if you have kids one day, we can be around to help out with the grandkids, just like grandma and grandpa grandpa do now. Um, We eat right. And even if it's sometimes tough to get your kids to eat, for example, like Amelia does not like zucchini and we have a shit ton of zucchini coming out of our garden. However, I did find uh, you fry up the squares. She likes that dipped in ketchup or we did zucchini fritters. She likes that. She, She loves zucchini muffins. So there's ways to get it in. But you need to set an example of eating right. Even if they don't want to touch it, like, okay, well, you're going to go hungry and you're not going to have dessert. And that was always the rule I had growing up. Like, okay, like you don't have to eat it. You don't have to try it. You know, at least try it. But uh, if you don't, then you don't get dessert because you only get dessert if you finish your dinner. Like what? As a kid, you always want to dessert. So like you have to at least try it. And then if you know your kid doesn't like something like we know Amelia doesn't like grilled zucchini, then you just don't give them that. You make something quick. So she, we also have a shit ton of tomatoes coming out of the garden. You know what she really loves? Tomatoes. In fact, we don't have to do anything. We can just give her a plate of cut up tomatoes and she'll be perfectly happy. So do stuff like that as well. Um, but then also saying example of like to work out and kids see that. I remember seeing that with my parents of them working out and, you know, you want to be like mom or you want to be like dad as a kid. So you want to set that example for them and kind of be that superhero, but also show them that it is important to take care of your health for long term. In fact, it's something that needs to be done so that they grow up in that environment that, OK, like when you're older, you need to do these things to be healthy. And we're not saying you be where it's the extremes, but most of you know that I'm not about the extremes anyway. So I'm not saying, oh, you need to show them that you have to run a marathon and you spend weekends away and you're doing all these things and your diet's super restricted. No, like you need to play the balancing act too. And that's also important where um, some parents are like, oh, I'm, I'm not introducing my kid to sugar at all. Like, cause we're cutting it out. Like, really? So what's going to happen when they grow up and they're out on their own? You're just going to hope that they never come in contact with sugar ever. Like they're going to have friends that are, don't have the same values and they're going to go out and have sugar and they're not going to know how to, you know, that this is a special treat or something. They're going to get hit with ice cream for the first time and be like, holy shit, this is fucking amazing. 
and then overdo it and get into issues. And you're like, well, I raised my kid right. It can't possibly be me. It's like, no, you never taught the moderation. And the reason I bring that up is I saw it in college with one of my friends where his mom was so restrictive, literally like can of tuna for, for lunch type restrictive, like borderline abusive and goes to college and it's all you can eat, literally cookies, ice cream, all the desserts, all the foods, fried food, everything, all you can eat. And it was like, oh, I never got these. These are amazing. And would just overdid it. And he gained over 200 pounds in college of body fat. Problem. Major problem. So it's, you know, it's important to teach moderation too of like, hey, like ice cream is a special treat. We go out as a family and we do this special event or we make this thing. And, you know, it's zucchini bread in the summer when we have fresh zucchinis. That's what we're doing right now. <clears throat> um, but getting back to you as mom or dad or future mom and dad or maybe grandma and grandpa too. You also want to make sure you're taking care of things now and staying motivated so you have the strength and energy to keep up with your kids, future kids or grandkids because they are energizer bunnies till they wear themselves out and take a nap. And that's when you can get stuff done. So it's like you can't always nap when baby naps or when the toddler naps. And you're lucky if they nap on the same schedule every single day. They're going to be running around like crazy. You have to keep up with them. That's going to take energy. And the only way you're going to get more energy is being in shape. If you're out of shape, you're going to be low energy. If you're eating the wrong things, you're going to be low energy. If your diet looks like garbage, like when what's the vegetable you eat every day? How many varieties of vegetables are you eating on a weekly basis? How many varieties are you eating on a daily basis? If you eat one vegetable per day, yeah, you're not supplying your body with the nutrition it's need, it needs. If you're eating like um, cereal and then like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and then maybe a half decent dinner and that's your diet, you're not going to have the energy to keep up with everyone. And then strength also plays a role. Like your kids are going to get heavier and heavier as they get bigger. So Amelia's, you know, 30 pounds now at 23 months, 23 months about. Uh, so she's 30 pounds and only getting bigger. Victoria is only gaining weight. Like they're just going to keep getting bigger, but they want you to hold them. Or if they get tired or not. You know, you take them hiking and they get tired. You're going to have to carry them. Or you go to Disney and they get tired. You're going to have to carry them. You need to have the strength to do that without hurting yourself. Without being like, no, I can't pick you up. Mom will hurt her back or dad will hurt her back, his back, not her back. Um, or it's going to be being able to like hold them up for the monkey bars, being able to go out and do that stuff. Being able to get down on the ground to play with them, being able to play like horsey when they want to jump on you and not like just having no energy, not having the strength to actually play with them and be like, no, I can't do that. Like that sucks to say like, no, I can't do that to your kids, like being able to move around. And of course, this is injuries withstanding. But as a normal, like if you don't have any injuries, like you should be able to do all those things. And one of the best indicators for longevity is being able to get up off the ground without using your hands. So if you can't get up and down off the ground without using your hands, you have some strength and mobility work you need to do because that is actually a sign of longevity. Those who can do that outlive those who cannot and have a better quality of life than those who, who do not. Because if you can't get up on, off the ground without using your hands and you're in old age, you fall, you break your wrist. How are you getting up off the ground to call for help? Like literally like that's kind of like why life alert was created guys. Um, and on top of that, a lot of times it's not the fall that breaks. It's usually what they found is a lot of times like your hip breaks, which you can increase bone density through strength training, by the way, the hip breaks, then the person falls. And then if you break your wrist, like how, how are you getting help? What you doing? You don't have any strength to pull yourself to call for help. That's the problem, and that's why if you can do these certain things, you have balance. Like you can stand on one foot. I believe it's stand on one foot for 10 seconds with your eyes closed. Uh, you should be able to do that on both sides. You should be able to get up and off, the, up 
and down off the ground without using your hands. If you can do all those things, you're in a great place and you wanna make sure you can continue to do those. Again, this is not for aesthetic goals. This is not for just general, like, I just wanna lose weight. This is for longevity, for being around for not only just yourself, but your spouse and your kids and future grandkids or current grandkids. So this is where if you're struggling with motivation, you're struggling with consistency and you're like, oh, I know I need to lose weight. You need to set a goal that's bigger than yourself. You need to look outside of yourself because just having a weight loss goal isn't good enough. Like it motivates nobody. Like I want to lose 10 pounds. Great. Okay. You've had the same goal for the past 10 years. I want to lose 10 pounds. So I can be around for my kids. Okay, now we're getting someplace. So make sure you have goals set like that. Look outside, do it for your kids. When you look at them, be like, shit, I'm not feeling like working out. Oh, fuck, I looked into my kid's eyes. Okay, I'm gonna go work out. And also on that note, like don't like avoid doing certain things with them. Like, oh, uh, my kid wants to go to the playground today, but I need to get my workout in. Like, yeah, there's a balancing act of like, Maybe you should just go to the playground because they're not always going to want to do that in the future. Like, did you get your three workouts in for the week? Yeah, but this is like the cardio day I really look forward to. Cool. Do it in the morning. Do it later at night. Um, Or it's okay to skip once in a while. But you need to build that consistency first. That's more like long term. Like once you've like built a great foundation and you're in a good spot, you've lost the weight. That's a conversation for then. But if you're at, listening and you're kind of at that spot, like it's okay to occasionally skip workouts or do, go for a hike instead of doing that, going to the playground instead of doing your workout. It's okay to do those things and spend time with your kids. You don't always have to be like, oh, like it's squat day. I can't go for a hike over my workouts. Like, oh, what's your priority here? And that's important. And if, if you're competing for competition, like, yeah, maybe your workouts are priority right now. But if you're not... Why, why are you skipping out spending time with your kids when you know, they're only a little kid for so long? They're only, once they're teenagers, you can do that all they, you want because they're not going to want to be around you that much. Um, anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, check out the show notes. We got free guys, five-day faster fat loss course. We have the rucking guide down below as we're getting closer to hunting season. And we also have three spots available for PWCs transformation program open right now for august so that is down below as well so make sure to check out the show notes and leave a five-star review and write a review for the show as this helps the show get pushed out so more people can find it it also helps me when you guys write a review as i do read those and figure out what kind of content what episodes you guys want to see or what guests you want me to bring on but thank you for tuning in guys as always Happy fucking Friday and go kill it out there this weekend, guys.